Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode here on Pastiche of Skin. It is wonderful to see you. Thank you very much for coming back. Today, we are checking out the D23 Video Game Level Up Expo. So, of course, Disney have a big announcement to make about all the games that they're going to be releasing this year, i.e. all the properties that they own. So, Star Wars, uh, Kingdom Hearts, uh, Spider-Man... Uh, a whole bunch of other stuff that'll all be related to their licensed properties. It's very odd to actually have Disney do a gaming expo specifically. I'm hoping to find a couple surprises in here. Probably some licensed games I haven't heard about. But we'll check it out and see what they got. Show me what you got! So obviously the champion Spider-Man and Kingdom Hearts there at the very top of this. And people are screaming with vigor. Still screaming with vigor. So this obviously is a pre-record. I haven't watched this live. Uh, I couldn't bring myself to actually watch it live. I wasn't too interested in it. But uh, with announcements for things like Kingdom Hearts 3, it's worthwhile uh, going through it to see what kind of stuff they show. So, uh, HTC Vive and a Switch game. Then I will be a superhero! Right, here we go. Way! Admit your flaws and bring on the influencers. Let's see. Fair play to them, though. I mean, essentially, that's part and parcel of actually being a couple of the biggest YouTubers on the planet. It's very cool that Disney got them in to do it. So, fair play to Jack. Have we now? Show me what you got! Uh, this is actually going to be interesting because I want to see what kind of uh, presentation style they have. He looks awful. Well, not awful. Awful. Awkward. All right, okay, shit, um, <laughs> that looks awkward. <laughs> so, so far we've obviously, uh, they, they've got their little kind of bantering intro there, but um, uh, uh, my mom said I don't care about Star Wars Battlefront 2. Really. I didn't care about Star Wars Battlefront during its own announcement and its details and all this stuff that was done for it during the, um, uh, the actual last big conferences of E3. I'm not going to be that concerned about hearing more about it today because all we've actually heard from since is the inclusion of loot crates and uh, loadouts and that uh, it's going to have an interesting story campaign, which is great, grand, that's fine. It's just the fact that uh, we're going to have lots of games that are going to be kind of a, announcing their big story campaigns 
along the way until that game comes out. And as much as Star Wars is an intriguing property, I, uh, who cares? It's Battlefront. It's the multiplayer game. But um, yeah, they're just, obviously they've probably got some stuff to talk about here. I'm I'm gonna see. I I don't know if I want to actually watch people be awkward or just skip to the actual importance of. So this is the benefit of actually watching this pre-recorded. Let's see how long it takes for it to actually get to. Can we? Yeah. Okay. So if we just, uh, oh, there we go. I'm trying to skip to the points where it's actually got like gameplay content. So let's see. Uh, maybe they've got some more storyline to actually show us in this, which would be the most interesting part, I suppose. That's an interesting story, but the big problem with that is that it's a villain story. Um, is, it, is this as interesting as the gunner of the original Death Star, like the book that was dedicated to him? All right, this is his uh, interviews with um, actors as much. I'm, I don't mean to demean their existence as uh, part of the show, and uh, this is actually obviously super interesting, and it's very focused on... Are we seeing motion? Oh, we're actually finally seeing motion here. Okay, there we go. Let's take a look at a trailer in motion. That's pretty cool. Oh, it's a featurette then? Uh, okay. That was going to be actually like a very story focused trailer that might be more interesting, but obviously they're talking to developers. Well, that's the one thing that the Star Wars Battlefront game hasn't got missing. It, the fidelity of the characters, the audio clips, the uh the the world ambiance is very very well articulated. That's something that they nailed down in the first game. It's not something we're actually worried about or complaining about its existence. Although admittedly, I might have complained about that guy's hair. But the um inclusion of a story mode that kind of just has you villaining it through that's absolutely fine. Well, this actually looks pretty cool. That's good. Like, I mean, pre alpha software, but it doesn't look like it has to improve much other than just get shaders right and character models and locations right. For it to actually be intriguing. Roll that tape, obviously. And now we watch them talk and show locations that we cannot play yet. So, concept art of locations, people talking about stuff, character render looking quite sinister and interesting. Okay, so obviously she's not on her own. She's uh, existing amongst a number of teammates and squad mates. Um, yeah, more featurettes on the making of Star Wars Battlefront 2. No, not much else to really show there except for some more concept art and a little bit more of the running around. Obviously, with all the pre-alpha um, software gameplay, we're not seeing like a uh, end gameplay or end look that's going to be. So it might be stripped down or looking not exactly the way it'll show whenever we get to play it. But uh, it looks shiny. It looks interesting. Uh, story mode will probably hold your interest for a few hours, and that's probably fine. And obviously, the maintained online multiplayer content is what they want you to be there for. So they can do their games as a service continuation and keep adding stuff as they go along. All right, so let's keep on. Let's keep it moving here a little bit. I mean, if they got another trailer, then that's fine. But I've got a feeling that they do not. So we're 15 minutes in to a one-hour conference. 
Oh, it was very nice of him to actually show up there. That's cool. Um, yeah, John Boyega. He's obviously in it. He's a big fan of the game. Um, he's always got his opinion about the game. Uh, fair play to him. Uh, he's really owning the role that he's got in the Star Wars franchise. And uh, Jack's probably super pleased to have met him. What is this we've got here? Uh, this is the VR story that we're going to be looking forward to. All right, this is more like it. This is something new. VR advanced development. And the advanced development of what is the question? So we're chatting HoloLens uh, and Gear VR, really, because that's the only two that really have the front-facing camera. That's adorable! I like fluffy things! Uh, ARs have been a big part of the Star Wars universe. So that was not that's not really AR, man. That's a hologram, and that's also a hologram. Uh, so I suppose like augmented reality is holograms, even though it's superimposing in the world where everybody can see it rather than actually an individual. But uh, I suppose <laughs> whatever, it's close enough. Until now? Oh my god! I think we've never heard about this before! <gasps> Such excitement! So wow! <coughs> okay. Ah, uh, so the phone slips into the top of it, projects down, reflects back off the lens, and then you see a super superimposed image, like projector glasses from the nineteen eighties. Smuggling footage out of the lab. All right, so what we're looking at is... Um, so it's going to use accelerometers, location reading, and actually place objects on surfaces, reading distance. And the thing is, right, phone technology is actually getting very good at that. But not whenever you're pointing the camera or the phone upwards and not using the sensor system from the camera itself. So literally, how is it reading the plane and the view? Is that actually, are they using like a mirror on the inside of the body of it to actually reflect into the camera lens? And it's gonna be very specific versions of phones that actually work with it? That is really, really specified in some way, shape or form. And with, uh, was it Lenovo who are actually doing the design on the headset? This is gonna be as gimmicky as fuck, man. That's awful. So Disney and Lenovo are going to be building us an AR headset that'll allow you to do the Jedi training modes and relive the Battle of Hoth. Let's see.
You have to buy for Oh no, you have to buy the lightsaber as well. <laughs> ah, fuck off. <laughs> oh no. No. That looks awful. But I mean it's a kid's toy. That's obviously a kid's toy. A very expensive fucking kid's toy. But it's gonna be a kid's toy. Oh, I'm glad they had fun, and that was fantastic, and hopefully we're finished with the Star Wars stuff. Okay. You remember, Jackie, where your lapel mic is? <laughs> Yeah. It's actually kind of cool to see Jack doing this for the first time because he's he's obviously nervous as fuck about actually presenting someone like this. Um and she's kind of taking the lead on it and he's kind of like being the second personality. Which is absolutely fine. I mean, that's kind of like if you're if it's something that you're not a long term professional at, then get yourself more used to it with um somebody who will support you. Uh, so this is actually obviously more talky talky, talky 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 about the things that they're going to be doing with the things and the place and the things and doing the things and the things and the things and yeah, more things and things, more Marvel and the things. We're good buddies. We're stuck in the office all the time. Okay, no problem. It's really obvious that you're fans because it looks like you're a really big fan of the Arkham series, but also want to put Spider-Man into it and do a good Spider-Man game because we haven't had one really since Spider-Man 2. And that was actually cross-platform, a really good game. Well, admittedly, I was a fan of the... Um, of Web of Shadows. Web of Shadows was quite good as well, but it had issues of its own where it was very combat-focused and there was not enough... I, I randomly... A, a, a round of adventures to take part in. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, boom, 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 doom, 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 boom, 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 boom. All right, so obviously a lot of moments that they're showing in here. Uh, Spidey's flowing into the city. Uh, combat. Uh, Mr. Negative, which I did not know much about Mr. Negative's role in... Spider-Man lately. Um, I did not know about it until I actually started picking up some of the modern comics and who the police officers are actually are in relation to each other. It's interesting to see. I'm actually I'm liking that as a villain. It's a, almost like a replacement kingpin and one that's not completely aware of his actions at all times so he has plausible deniability which is very very smart for a villain to have and uh, having him his powers be limited by the time he spends as it's actually a Jekyll and Hyde story which is very well put together. What we got here? We went, a couple, we went forward a minute. Have we got anything else new to show? No. All right, there we go. So we've got something that we haven't seen uh, much of before. Lego Marvel Super Heroes. Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. So the Lego franchise continues at a great pace, making sure to cover absolutely every character of every single franchise in lego Fight glory. Now, it is weird to see uh, a Lego Batman movie and then a Lego Marvel Super Heroes, so we're getting... We're seeing DC and Marvel crossovers so, so commonly that I have a feeling that we will see a Lego Marvel and DC crossover before we'll see a live action or an animated crossover hit our shelves in any way, shape, or form, which is going to be interesting. Okay. Miles Morales. Oh, yeah, Homecoming. Homecoming, Spidey. So, a um, pajama and hoodie version of Spider Man. Exciting costumes. And get access to classic Gardens of the Galaxy character pack. Ooh, yes, yeah, very. Such wow. 
Sweatpants Spidey. Almost as comfortable as the amazing Bagman. I'm gonna drop a bomb. It's for mobile. All right, Spider Man Oculus. All very interesting, but you're not showing me any game yet. <sighs> Hulk feel like lady inside. All right, fair enough. So it's room scale VR for a shmup using the um, controls. <laughs> yeah, that's actually quite charming. But Power is United VR, so essentially it's team-based VR gameplay via Oculus Rift. And that's how you port from location to location. Makes sense. So Oculus Rift and Touch uh, Marvel VR game, which looks unbelievably like the first person perspective Marvel Heroes game that would have been out years ago. Um, I don't remember who was developing it, but there was a game that was canceled that was a first person perspective Marvel Heroes game, possibly for, was it for the three? Oh, it was for, it was a Kinect game as far as I can remember. And it was actually dropped, and now we actually have another service that's going to be using a similar mechanic and design, which is interesting. Um, I've got no qualms with that as a gameplay, but um, yeah, with it being on the Oculus, I mean, how many of us are actually going to be playing it? In the long run, how many of us are going to be playing it, and how big of a game is it going to be? I'd love to see more about it and hear more about it, but it's, again, one of those things I will only be watching as a territory experience. It's the kind of thing you would definitely put into, like, the Marvel superheroes theme park, and actually go on it as a ride where every person gets a room where they can just smash around and play characters and take their turn. But uh, the sweaty pads on the inside of those are going to be interesting after a bunch of that. But it doesn't have to be Marvel heroes though, that's the big point. Which can cause a massive amount of nausea for people that actually don't get their scale or thought from what size they are. Like, I mean, somebody like me wearing the Hulk, it feels probably less incongruous than if I'm playing as Rocket Raccoon. Meanwhile, a kid playing as Rocket Raccoon, the world seems to be from the right perspective. I don't know. That could actually be quite disorientating for a lot of people, especially if they do a shrinking thing that they kind of showed in the video, but more likely it's literally you log in and you're actually like looking up at everything. So everything seems to be uncomfortably large to where you are. Which scale wise could fuck with you in the case of using the Oculus in a wide open room because they don't have full body tracking. So you could smash into stuff. But yeah, you know that works.
Yeah, so it's 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 an events based thing. SDCC are going to have the characters. It'll be designed around going to an experience or going to a place to do it, and that's where people will actually check it out and be so excited about it. Right. So it really plays as a twin stick shooter. Stan's still looking around. Okay, great. That's fantastic. <laughs> they don't really have much to say other than it'll be coming out on the Oculus Rift and Touch. Hi, Mark. Bye, Mark. <laughs> All right, so obviously the the YouTuber influence is strong in this one. Um, well, we got the show. Hey! Don't assume your dreams are just fantasy. You can imagine the world believing it, and you'll be there. So obviously this footage is going to be heavily, heavily, heavily truncated, and also the fact I'm probably going to get summoned off of the internet just for showing it. So let's just assume. Because this is all the stuff that got shown at E3 at the moment that's being shown for Kingdom Hearts. And it was all, all pulled down, or at least monetized by somebody. So, <laughs> I wonder which one's actually going to... So I don't know who those was actually monetized this. Will it be Disney, Squaresoft, or some bizarre third party? That's what's curious, because I, I want to know how many different claims are going to happen at the same time for this content. <laughs> I forgot it was the Japanese dub as well that was on this. Skinny news today, though. Alright, so... Obviously we're getting a lot of Kingdom Hearts lore here while we're playing through it, but it does look gorgeous. It's looking good, even though it's taken so long to come out of our hands. Um, yeah, Kingdom Hearts. Looking more flowy than it ever has before. Action packed and orientated. Uh, again, you're always going to be playing with Goofy, Donald, and Sora. And then, of course, uh, with the summons and other characters that you pick up from world to world. And Sora's looking pretty badass now. I mean... You have to think about this, this is going from Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, 3, Birth by Sleep, all the others. He can't really be reset in his power level every single time now, so we're going to be seeing a lot of like zippy around movement and experiences that are actually. Oh, I like the wall running there. Alright, so the summoning of Roxas essentially, so they want support in some way, shape, or form. All right, this is the darkness in his heart. Hey! So, the said implication that if you want to bring Roxas back, you have to face your dark, you have to face the dark side of yourself. All right. New trailer. That would be the one that we show now. All right, so obviously I've been teasing this. I didn't even know this was teased at the end of the previous trailer. Shut up and just show it. And, uh, you know, Tetsuo and Nomura and gang. Uh, let's see the fast forward. Uh, it's good to see you guys. Fantastic. Uh, good, 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 good. Fantastic. Are we seeing content? Are we seeing... Yes, we are. Okay. Roll the tape! Don't! 
assume your dream are just fantasy if you words imagine blah 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 it was essentially the same thing it was actually before the other one i'm just i'm actually trying to use an excuse to be able to talk over the top of this so that it's not really going to actually hopefully get called on the audio that's going to be played back over the top but the combat's looking snazzy and fast you know, like i was just saying uh you can imagine a world believing it and dive in there you go that's what i was saying You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. Little an action figure in a house underneath the bed of a big, big house. That is actually pretty a preview. I, I like this. I actually like the design. Because that, that whole kind of like redesign of uh, Sora and Donald and Goofy whenever they go into another world is always part and parcel of the fun parts of this. I mean, I'll always love the design from the Halloween Town episodes, um, even though it was completely unnecessary in the Kingdom Hearts 2. But I like the design. No, we're not to do Andy. You are a toy! I have to say, Woody and Buzz look great. <laughs> they actually look better than Sora, Donald, and Goofy. It's like, they actually look a smoother and well-designed toy compared to their blockiness. Blank empty stares from the toys. <laughs> right, so everybody else has gone missing. All right, so obviously they're leading a trail for somebody in a black hood. Damn that organization 13. Yeah, well, we're not gonna leave this to you, partner. Hmm. Well, at least the heroes are actually gonna jump in on this. So who would someone be? Would it be Woody and Buzz? Or is it actually all the toys together? Almost like a, um, Oh, what do you call it? Knights of the Round kind of thing? Oh my god! Well, obviously we're going to see a whole bunch of enemies from there. Out the window, down the roof, across the street, down the road. So I like playing in a scale world that looks like this. This is going to be, oh, this is going to actually be kind of cool. I like that. That's kind of awesome. Ah, right. <laughs> and then you end up grabbing a bunch of mallets and weapons based on the toys. All right. That's fairly charming. I actually like the design of like the wee summon tools kind of thing as well. Right. Oh, so you have different weapon types from the summons as well. That makes sense. Drill punch. So I'm assuming like one half of it is Buzz, and the other half is somebody else, or what is that? Is it just a toy that's related to this world? So it doesn't seem like it's actually someone that's. You. It seems like someone that's unique to this world rather than anything else. No, not quite. Oh, well, either way, it must be something to do with the actual like sword that you have. Oh, that's pretty badass, actually. <laughs> Alright, that's pretty awesome. I like that. You said you turned into a first person shooter for a little while? Okay. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Alright, we need more of those. Yep. <laughs> Alright, I can get on board with that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Don't he last for a few seconds? You jump from one to the other? <laughs> Alright, alright. Woo! <laughs> Shoot all the things. And you only have so much power or so many uh, usages with that character, I imagine. Hmm. One heart's emptiness fills the emptiness of another.
Xemnas? Is that who that is? Whenever it's actually, I, I can, I cannot even keep track of your organization 13R anymore. You know what? I need super butter bones to explain this shit to me. Well, that was it. That was uh, showing one, that's showing the Disney Pixar Toy Story world that's going to be in this game. All right. That'll be interesting. So, yeah. Toy Story, Andy's World, uh, Buzz and um, Woody, and uh, of course, probably Zargon and a bunch of other characters or whatever else. But um, yeah, Organization 13 obviously are behind it. So, are we taking Organization 13 as being like the, the big bads or at least the continual baddies the same way we kind of did with uh, Kingdom Hearts 2? I thought there was like, more thing they'd gone somewhere else with it. So as I was saying, I have no idea what the fuck is going on. So obviously that was um, a bit of a comedic moment for actually the full time there, but <laughs> you know what? We don't have to sit here and watch this shit. I don't have to be treated like a goddamn piece of garbage. No drill sergeants, get the fuck out of my face. So obviously we've got uh, more story to tell. I want to talk more about Kingdom Hearts and how they're involving the characters and how it's bringing together so many Disney franchises and so many Disney franchise things that we've never seen connected together before with the Kingdom Hearts universe. But of course, we're actually like really, really happy that we're going to be bringing back so many characters from our past, so many new things to talk about. Ha ha ha, look at this world, doesn't it look so much real? Isn't it crazy that only Pixar was years and years ago and wasn't part of Disney, but now it's part of Disney and now it's a Disney Pixar thing, and now we're all blah blah blah, we're good friends, ha ha ha, this is fantastic. Nora Mora, hee 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 yes, 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 as indeed it is. And, uh, I'm, I have no idea what they're filling this minute after minute with. I've, I'm guessing, but I'm not expecting massive, massive plot reveals from something like this. So, what is this? Oh, obviously some swag, is it? And there's one for everybody in the audience! If you're long under your seats. So it's stickers, a poster, and probably, yeah, it was that one as well, where it's one, two, and three, or the interior art. A special Indian medal. Right, right. Oh, okay. Are you defending me? Yes, sir. Oh, God. Please have a cosplayer of Sora. Come on. Like, have a cosplayer of Sora, Donald, and Goofy. Oh, no, it's just the rest of the team. You got a friend in me! Oh, you've got a friend in me! Sorry. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the D23 conference. Obviously, it is coming to a close. We're going to just turn this the fuck down. What did you think? What did you say? What did you feel? Did you hear what I said? I mean, well, how long did we run on it? Like, I, I chopped through that. All right. So, recording time-wise, that was 40 minutes. So, I took an hour and 10 minute program and reduced it down to 40 minutes. And I don't feel like I missed anything, really. I don't think there was anything that was um, completely out of the way. But I'm glad I actually did a reduced version of this because there was nothing of major interest. Kingdom Hearts 3 is on pace to continue being a Kingdom Hearts game. Grand Star Wars uh, VR looks like a really cheap, shitty toy that's going to cost an absolute fortune. Uh, VR, Marvel, United Powers, looks like Sonic's only going to be ever played at conference, like a, at an SDCC or at another Disney conference or in the a future Disney Superheroes Island kind of thing. It really does not feel like anything that would be played by... Uh, regular gamers for the purposes of uh, check catch up with their friends like that it, it feels like an immersive experience that also happens to be a attempt at a doing larger scale space VR with the Oculus Rift and Touch obviously showing people standing while playing it um, uh, Oculus Rift can map you and track you when you're doing those sort of things but um, I do have a feeling that movement, location tracking, and the space is going to be an issue, like it is for absolutely any VR for any person. So yeah, my interest in the level up, the Walt Disney Company's video game showcase is done and dusted, folks. And I hope it's actually been really entertaining to see me bitch and moan over the top of it and yawn. I was actually bored watching a lot of that, and I couldn't even think of things to actually say over the top of it for long periods of time. Hopefully it was actually easy enough to hear and as boring as it was for you to see. I don't expect many people to be watching the video, but I want to say thank you very much for coming here to actually check it out. As I've been past your skin, talking over the top of the live level up Walt Disney Company's video game conference showcase thing me jigger that they chose to do instead of E3. And um, I hope to actually see you all again very soon. So obviously if this is actually on the YouTube, it's going to go boom and there'll be a play this button and a other buttons and most recent videos buttons and a subscribe button floating around there if you enjoyed that enjoyed this video make sure to hit the subscribe button if not make sure to just search for me pastiche of skin it's underneath me down here right about this bit right, right about here just hit that button or search for me online you'll find me on many all of the actual different platforms and i hope to see you all again in the next bullshit marketing program thank you very much guys and i will see you all really soon bye